My name is Megan Ballor, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Lake Erie Yellow Perch Task Group. The Yellow Perch Task Group is comprised of members from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, New York Department of Environmental Conservation, Ohio Division of Wildlife, Ontario Ministry of Northern Development, Mines, Natural Resources and Forestry, and the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. I'd like to thank all the members of the task group for contributing to this presentation. In Lake Erie, yellow perch are managed in four different management units. The Western Basin is Management Unit 1. Management Unit 2 is the West Central Basin. Management Unit 3 is the East Central Basin. And Management Unit 4 is the Eastern Basin. The next few slides contain graphs of harvest. And this first graph contains lakewide harvest of all gear types combined. The four colored lines indicate the harvest for each of the different management units, and the black dashed line indicates the lakewide harvest for all four management units combined. In 2021, lakewide, the harvest was 3.296 million pounds of yellow perch, an increase of 6% from 2020. This was 53% of the total allowable catch of 6.238 million pounds. The highest harvest was in Management Unit 1, with 1.655 million pounds of yellow perch harvested, followed by Unit 3 with 0 0.944 million pounds. In Unit 4, there was 0 0.371 million pounds, and in Unit 2, there was 0 0.327 million pounds of yellow perch harvested. This figure shows the gillnet harvest by Management Unit and Lakewide. Lakewide, there was 2.181 million pounds of yellow perch harvested, a 2% increase from the previous year. The highest harvest was in Management Unit 1 with 0 0.959 million pounds. Management Unit 2 had the lowest harvest, and it was the lowest harvest in the time series for Management Unit 2. In Unit 3, the harvest of 0 0.705 million pounds was the second lowest harvest since 1999 in that area. And Unit 4's 0.312 million pounds of harvest was a moderate harvest for that area. This is the sport harvest by management unit and lakewide. Lakewide in 2021, 0.581 million pounds of yellow perch was harvested in the sport fishery, a 49 percent in, increase from the previous year. The highest harvest was in management unit one, with 0.513 million pounds harvested a 51% increase from the previous year, and it was 88% of the lake-wide harvest. In Management Unit 2, the harvest of only 5,000 pounds was a decrease of 74% from the previous year and was the lowest harvest in Management Unit 2's time series. In Unit 3, the harvest of 15,000 pounds was an increase of over 100% from the year before. However, it was still the third lowest in the time series. And in Management Unit 4, the harvest of 48,000 pounds was an increase from the previous year and near the long-term average. Trap net harvest by management unit and lakewide. Lakewide harvest in 2021 was 0 0.534 million pounds, a decrease of 9% from 2020. The highest harvest was in management unit three with 0 0.224 million pounds of yellow perch harvested, an increase of 20%. This was followed by harvest in unit one with 0 0.183 million pounds harvested, an increase of 34%. In unit two, only 0 0.116 million pounds was harvested, a decrease of 53%. And this was the first time since the 1980s that Management Unit 2 did not have the highest amount of trap nut harvest in the lake. In Unit 4, there was just 11,000 pounds harvested, a decrease of 23% from the previous year. This figure shows the fishery harvest by 10 minute grid in 2021, with the darker blue squares indicating higher months of harvest. The highest harvest was in Management Unit 1, where 50% of the lake wide harvest occurred. The next few figures show gillnet harvest rates by gear type. This is the gillnet harvest rate by management unit. 
In Management Unit 1, the 2021 gillette harvest rate of 41 kilograms per kilometer was a decrease of 4% from 2020, and it was the lowest harvest rate in that unit since 1999. In Unit 2, the harvest rate was its lowest since 1998. It was 35 kilograms per kilometer. In Unit 3, the harvest rate of 54 kilograms per kilometer increased from the low in 2020 but was the second lowest in the time series since 1998. In Unit 4, the gillette harvest rate declined to 67 kilograms per kilometer. It was the lowest value since 2000, but also had a high proportion of small H2 fish in the harvest, which have a lower weight. These are the sport harvest rates by management unit. In 2021, the sport harvest rate was similar in Management Unit 1 and Management Unit 4 with 1.9 and 2.0 fish per angler hour. In Management Unit 2, the harvest rate declined 93% in 2021 to its lowest in the time series of 0.1 fish per angler hour. The harvest rate in 2021 increased in Management Unit 3, but is still the third lowest in the time series at 1.3 fish per angler hour. And this figure shows the trap net harvest rate by management unit. Trap net harvest rate increased in units one, two, and three, and decreased slightly in management unit four. Although there were increases in management unit two and three, the harvest rate does remain low for the time series. This, this shows the age composition of the total harvest by management unit for all gear types combined. In management units one, two, and three, age three comprised the highest proportion of the harvest. This was the 2018 year class, and it was 60, 63, and 30% of the harvest in units one, two, and three, respectively. In unit four, the highest proportion of the harvest was age two fish, the 2019 year class, which was 38% of the harvest. The next four slides show survey assessment data of age two and older fish, which is used in our abundance estimate models. This shows the Ontario Partnership gillnet survey data and the Ohio fall trawls. In 2021, the partnership survey age two and older catch was low and declined from the previous year. And in the Ohio trawl was unfortunately not completed in 2021 due to a boat breakdown. In Management Unit 2, in 2021, the Ontario Partnership Survey gillnet catch rate increased slightly from the previous year, and the Ohio Fall Trawl Survey also increased slightly from the last two years. However, catch rates were still low in both surveys. In Unit 3, survey results were mixed on the north and sh south shores of the lake. And the Ontario Partnership Gillnet Survey catch rate of age 12 older fish increased in 2021. However, the Ohio Trawl Survey was the lowest catch rate in the time series and has been low for several years. In Management Unit 4, the Ontario Partnership Gillnet Survey catch rate increased in 2021 due to a good catch of age 2 fish, and the New York Gillnet Survey had a moderate catch of H2 and older fish. The next four slides show abundance estimates from our ADMB model. Abundance estimates from 1975 to 2021 are estimated using fishery and survey data, and projections for 2022 are based on survival estimates for H3 and older fish from 2021, and H2 recruitment is estimated using multiple juvenile survey indices. In Management Unit 1, 2022 abundance is estimated at 65.8 million fish, a decrease of 17% from 2021, and abundance is considered to be good with moderate recruitment. In Management Unit 2, 2022 projection of abundance is 34.3 million fish, which is similar to the abundance value in 2021. The abundance is low with low to moderate recruitment. In Management Unit 3, 2022 abundance is projected to be 
63.7 million fish. This is down 16% from 2021. And abundance is moderate with low to moderate recruitment. There are concerns that the model may be overestimating the 2021 age two value at 51 million fish. This value is projected forward to determine the 2022 age three abundance estimate, which is the largest contributor to the calculation of recommended available harvest in management unit three. Harvest and catch rates in management unit three are similar to management unit two and population status may be tied to management unit two. The Yellow Perch Task Group is concerned that MU3 may be trending towards lower abundance estimates like Management Unit 2 is. In Management Unit 4, the abundance in 2022 is estimated to be 10.2 million fish, a decrease of 6% from 2021. Abundance is good with moderate to good recruitment. The Yellow Perch Harvest Control Rule has four components. The first is a target fishing mortality as a percent of the fishing mortality at the maximum sustainable yield. The second is a limit reference point, which is the biomass at the maximum sustainable yield. The third is a probabilistic risk tolerance of reaching that limit reference point. This is our P star value of 0 0.2. And the fourth is a limit on the annual change in total allowable catch of plus or minus 20%. This table has the reference points for yellow perch for 2022. The column labeled BMSY are the values of our limit reference points for each of the four management units. The F target column has the maximum fishing rates as a percent of FMSY according to the harvest control rule. And at the end are the P star values, so, which is the probability of the projected spawning stock biomass after fishing would be below the limit reference point. In management unit one, the P star value is zero in 2022. In management unit two, the P star value is 0 0.54, which is above the limit of 0 0.2. In management unit three, the P star value is 0 0.02. And in management unit four, the P star value is zero. This is the spawning stock biomass for management unit one compared to the limit reference point, which is the gray dashed line. The red circles are the projected spawning stock biomass for 2022 and 2023, and the black bars are two times the standard deviation around those points. The 2023 spawning stock biomass is important because this is used in our harvest control rule. If the probability of the 2023 spawning stock biomass falling below the limit reference point is greater than that P star value of 0.2, then we must reduce the fishing rate to reduce that probability. In management unit one, the 2023 spawning stock biomass value is above the limit reference point. In management unit two, the P star value is 0 0.54 and the 2023 spawning stock biomass overlaps the limit reference point. So the harvest control rule stipulates that a reduced target fishing rate must be used to increase the 2023 projected spawning stock biomass to be ab above the limit reference point. In management unit three, the spawning stock biomass for 2023 is projected to be above the limit reference point. However, the error around that projection is approaching the limit reference point. And in management unit four, the 2023 spawning stock biomass is projected to be above the limit reference point. This table shows the yellow perch recommended allowable harvest values for 2022. The table starts with the abundance of fish for ages two and older and three and older in 2022 and shows the target and actual fishing rates used in 2022. As you can see with that red value in management unit two, the fishing rate has been reduced from 0 0.665 to 0 0.120 in order to increase the 2023 spawning stock biomass above the limit reference point. The recommended allowable harvest values, min, mean, and max values are shown on the right side of the table. In management unit one, the mean RAH is 4.257 million pounds with a range of 3.2 to 5.2 million pounds. In management unit two, the mean RAH is 0.537 million pounds 
with a range of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 million pounds. In Unit 3, the mean RAH is 3.287 million pounds with a range of 2.6 to 3.9 million pounds. And in Unit 4, the mean RAH is 0 0.528 million pounds with a range of 0 0.399 to 0 0.656 million pounds. When we compare the mean 2022 recommended allowable harvest to the 2021 total allowable catch, the change is an increase of 68% in management unit one, decrease of 13% in unit two, increase of 28% in unit three, and an increase of 1% in unit four. There is a constraint on the annual change in the total allowable catch of plus or minus 20%, this would apply in management units one and three with a range of 2.026 to 3.038 in unit one and a range of 2.054 to 3.082 million pounds in unit three. Finally, I would just like to remind everyone that the Yellow Perch Task Group report can be found on the Great Lakes Fishery Commission website. Thank you for your time.